So let's let's talk a little bit today about. Is this on? Is is this thing on? Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit today about language. Now, there's this misconception going around that language contains the meaning. So, for example, I say something to you, I say, hello, Joe, and the feeling is that the waves that carry this meaning to you contain the meaning. So, what I mean by that is, hello, Joe, contains the meaning of hello, Joe, but in fact, this isn't true. Another example might be more illustrative. For example, when I say to you, the car is in the garage, or garage, as you may prefer, then you might think that I'm conveying to you the meaning of this sentence by the words that come to you. Well, the fact is that, in fact, the meaning is in you, or it's in me, but the meaning is not in the words. Let me illustrate this in another way. Suppose that you're sitting in a car and you're listening to the air wishing by and you're thinking to yourself, I really must call Joanne. And so you pick up your cellular phone and you hear the dial tone and so forth and you say, hello, Joanne. Now, is the meaning carried in the wires and through the air or is the meaning carried in your intention? Ponder that for a moment. So, what I'd like to do today is talk about language. I, is this on? I, I, can you hear me? Uh, okay. Language is commonly believed to contain the meaning of what we want. So, for example, I say to you, in order to open the jar, you must turn it counterclockwise. Now, we tend to think that the words that I say, the way in which I move my lips, and the sounds that come to your eardrums, holds the meaning. Well, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, this is not the case. The meaning is in me, and the meaning is in you, but the meaning is not in the words. Information is not something which is in the sentence structure, or in the phrases that I use, or in the electrons that come toward you, even now as I'm speaking to you remotely as I'm driving in a car, from who knows where to who knows where, and you don't care. In practice, ladies and gentlemen, the meaning is carried between your retinas and my retinas when we both look at each other, but not by the, as it were, photonic transmission. No, 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 I'm sorry. It's carried by who we are and what we mean. What we mean is in us, inside ourselves. How we mean is the words we choose. So, language, although it seems to be something about meaning, is really about ourselves. Let's think for a moment what it would be like to try to tell you who I am if I didn't have a language. What could I do? I could dance. I could sing. I could make gurgling noises. Which of these would tell you who I am? Well, some more than others, let's face it. If I sat in front of you and I recited the Encyclopedia Britannica, that will have quite a different effect than the effect I'm having now, which is, after all, unknowable to me. So as I speak to you here, here I am here. Are, are you here? You are here now, but not the same now where I am now. But that doesn't matter, you see, because language, although it doesn't contain the meaning, is a perfectly good conveyor of myself. After all, c'est moi. So, let's ponder for a moment what it would be like if language worked perfectly. By that I mean everything I say you would understand precisely in the way I mean it. There would be no confusions, no misunderstandings, no ambiguity. What would that be like? Well, would we be able to be different? If everything I said to you, you understood perfectly, and everything you said to me, I understood perfectly, that would mean that we would have to be in exactly the same place, as it were, the exact same sort of intellectual, spiritual, emotional context at all times. Well, if that were true, 
Could we be different? Wouldn't we be essentially the same entity? Not essentially, but completely essentially the same entity. Well, if language then were perfect, we'd all be the same. So the fact that you don't always understand me is actually a blessing, because it means that there's a me and the you, you and me. So all of this stuff about, oh, I wish you could understand me better, oh dear, you'd never understand me, is, on the other hand, a good thing. Because otherwise, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between something you said and something I said. And that would be rather confusing, don't you think? Thank you.